um, we will switch over to the demo. And I have like 20 minutes left, so that should be good. Uh, let's let me share my screen. Therefore, um, I hope then that works smoothly. Um, you should see my screen right now. Perfect. Good, 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 good. And let me organize that for a second. Also you to watch the clock a bit. Good. So first of all, uh, yeah, we are on the system. So um, pretty versions is already there. What I wanted to show you in the first place, um, we can go through um, these or we can enable where we can enable um, preview features or features which are not automatically enabled. So features where there's maybe some has some impact on your processes. Um, I would definitely recommend you to not do this on production just to test it out. Maybe you can have like a developer environment or you have or like a copy of the environment or uh, you do have like a test QA, test dev system or whatever. So please do it there first before you do everything on production. <laughs> um, just my recommendation. Um, if you go to your settings here in the project operations model driven map, select settings, select parameter, there should be one, there has to be one, <laughs> there cannot be two, there is only one, uh, one parameter uh, for your entire organization. So whatever you, you put in here is valid for your whole organization. And there is a little uh, sneaky guy over there called feature control. And um, if you click on a drop down, you can see I still have like uh, material pricing methods to enable and as well date effective price overrides. So I want to make click on the date effective price overrides and it says here, uh, do you want to do that? And um, it kind of explains me a bit what it is. And then I click OK because um, it's a dialogue and I feel confident to, to click on OK. So once this is done, we, we let it run. Um, it usually takes like uh, two or three minutes in the background. You can see it kind of refreshes here. And um, based on like basically based on what you enabled, you as well get some more options here to to set up. So you, for example, you can as well now um, say that you can like for custom pricing, you can always create a full copy, or if not, so you can you can do have some options to play around what works better for you. So. Um, with the background of having this now enabled, um, we jumping to our order and from the order, we directly jumping to the price list because um, I may want to give you an overview about um, how these are working. Let's refresh for a second. So just in case it's not loaded yet. Um, on the uh, on the roll prices, we go for Who's, who's one, the project manager. Let's go for the project manager. It's a bit hidden, actually, in my opinion, um, but it should be fine. And uh, yeah, and there we do have new tab here, date, effective overrides, and then I can create a new role override here. So we do see right now, we have uh, 179 uh, US dollars, and for example, then, I want to create a new override there. And this one is effective then from Monday on, and it's the 1st of May. And from 1st of May on, we charge only 120. So what happens then basically is that from the 1st of, of March, then we only charge 120 till we do have our new override or we delete that one. Um, we can as well set the um, scope for that. So we can as well, um, for example, select a special customer for that um, or something different. Uh, jumping back to our project contracts, um, I want to as well talk very quickly at one about advances and retainers. I've already created one here. So this can be, um, this kind of runs next to your project. So um, you can get this upfront payment from the customer um, as often as you want, <laughs> at least in the system. Uh, you can set up a scheduler here. So in the scheduler, you um, you have the option to set up a start date, and you can either 
uh, it doesn't tell you that, but it doesn't, um, it will either set you like an end date or a number. So you can, for example, set up the start date and I wanna receive six of them and the um, invoice frequency is monthly and each one or in total we will have uh, 50,000 US dollars. So and then it will set it up and create um, those retainers and then we can later in the invoicing phase set them ready to invoice and um, attach the, these to the invoice. So right now it um, this is the old one and these are the new ones. So it created me for um, those five times all of these different ones and as well as split it my amount. So I can all of them then set ready to invoice and the specialty on this is um, it will really be only invoiced on the invoice date. So this is a limitation here. Um, so be careful about that. It will be definitely only be invoiced on that date. Good. Um, that is about the project contract and the advances and retainers. Uh, we want to quickly jump into the project because I can already see Katarina's face looking at me because I'm running out of time. And uh, we do here have some um, examples on the tasks. I hope my session didn't expire. I did refresh right before the demo and I was praying to the demo gods that everything works fine and it does. I'm surprised. Um, you can already see there's a lot of color here. So we do have conditional coloring here enabled and um, you do set this up very easily. Um, you can select any of the, um, let's add a new color. You can set up any of the columns right there, for example, uh, let's say name. And you do have an operator and then say, for example, contains. And then we do have a good uh, value for that. Let's take five. And then I can set up a color. Let's do light purple. Save that and it highlights me the port as five. And so you can kind of highlight important things. So for example, I highlighted here um, all the assigned to um, columns where I'm assigned or for example, everything that should have been finished. Usually you do see that there is this um, highlighted in red, but here then the whole column is highlighted and as well all the urgent um, project tasks are highlighted as well. Um, so it's pretty useful and it also well stays when I go back or something or I close my laptop and come back on Monday. So this all stays. Um, we do see different tabs here. Uh, so we do have a timeline, of course, and chart section and what is pretty news are, are the assignments. And here we do see all the um, resource assignments in my project. And I do see these are grouped by resource. I can group them by task too. So it would be then more reflecting my project task plan. But um, I as well want to change the sorting a bit to weekly. So and now I can see that Joey, for example, he's assigned to my certain task right there. And um, yeah, he's spending in the week of the 16th of April, um, 35 hours in total. So I want to extend that um, here to the week before. So he should start earlier. And I want to give him like 10 more hours of budget. And it doesn't let me because uh, we're using uh, dependencies. And therefore, it cannot start there because, um, yeah, the predecessor will be not finished on this time. So I'm devastated. But then I, I, I think, OK, Joey can maybe work on the results workshop a bit more in this week so he can spend more time with me. And instead of eight hours, I will assign him 12 hours. So I can really micromanage then as well my resources and my assignments. Um, in my project and assign those hours and may even because we updated as well the effort of the task but with plus four hours we can may even like um do our whole project planning right there and it doesn't need to wait till you do have your final resources assigned it will as well work with uh, generic resources and because i was like plumbing about um everything that was related to um dependencies and um, how they destroy my plans. Um, dependencies as well got an update actually. Uh, let's figure one out. 
uh, you can see if you do have a Project Plan 3 or Project Plan 5 license, you will get um, the opportunity to have advanced dependency types in order to not only work with finish to start, but as well finish to finish, start to start, and start to finish. So you can select them here in the, in the drop down um, in the dependency. I just showed this on a different environment because there I do have a license. Uh, here I don't have them. And uh, therefore, it is just showing me the usual. Good. Um, that's for the tasks. And then uh, last but not least, uh, we as well want to create a budget, right? Because um, this is as well a new functionality and you may already have spotted here. There's this little guy here, create budget. And I previously activated the budget feature on the parameter. So it is available for us here. And I can choose from a manual and estimates budget. The, we chose, choose the estimates budget because we already did our project plan and our project plan seems to be pretty good. And uh, we wanna get this from resource assignments. The second option is project team members. So if you do have a dis discrepancy between that, you can may as well use project team members. In this case, I'm totally fine with um, resource assignments and um, I, ex I gave extra budget to Joey, so it should be fine. And um, I can as well provide a value of like how much of the budget already used um, can be used on top. So if this, for example, what I've planned is my maximum budget, I cannot use more. I'll leave this one empty. Um, it as well applies, of course, to expenses and material in this case, because it is only referring to what we do have in our task section it will be time so and we say okay we do have like 25 percent more of what we have planned already and then we're going to import that and what happens in the background it kind of creates a new um, budget plan for us and it uh, copies the estimates from the uh, resource assignments to that project plan and it gives me a small notification as soon as it's done. Last time it was working when I just refreshed and then it was saying, hey, your budget is done. Hey, your budget is done. You get like this little um, section here, project was created successfully and you do see here some budget over there. And what it basically takes, it confirms or it converts your project plan into this um, budget plans here and it is welcome to the version that will be interesting for in a few minutes and what is basically important see so you in detail we we gonna can go through this but i'm pretty short of time um so in detail it creates for each task and each role each resource like a certain line and then later on during the um, time recording um the resources will be able to consume the budget so with creating time entries and creating services they will getting approved by the project manager the budget here will be um, consumed and as well the project manager has the option to uh, validate the budget and as well to approve the budget um, in the first place uh, we can see if everything is correct so we do see that we get a little bit more budget here in total as we already have planned. So we do have a little puffer and um, this is perfectly fine. We can add as well new budget lines manually. Maybe they are not yet included in our project plan. So we can um, do add them manually, um, but for now it is perfectly fine as mentioned and we can do submit um, the budget. Of course, um, if I make changes to my, my project plan, I can resubmit or uh, re-import all of these budget lines again and uh, receive the updates then based on my resource assignments. Um, once submitted, uh, I do get the option as well to approve and reject. So basically what happens here, it is uh, here then in review. Um, it comes in as well with a version as mentioned. We will point this out in a few seconds when we are back to PowerPoint actually, not that you're waiting for that. So, this will be approved and I will as well get some little notification. Maybe if I refresh again, then it gives me some little notification. Yay, my budget got approved. Perfect. 
on the spell. What I get on top, I get like some little chart here for my project management activity on the on the main form. So you can see like what is tracked on already. Right now there's nothing tracked, but I do actually do have some actuals already prepared fully. Yes, here they are. And what you get basically when you um, open that actual, so this is one actual like one hour of work, and you do see budget associations. And uh, what happens then in the in the background, which we can speed up right now, um, that um, you can re-elevate the budget, and um, then it will set this little flag here on scheduled. And in the background, there is a flow then running once in a while that then asynchronously um, searches the correct budget line for my actual and then works with that budget and um, basically tracks it against it. And as a PM, I can be planning with my budget. I can um, schedule it. I can approve it and I can as well maintain and track it while the people are working on it.